Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this video, we are going to look more at the properties of numbers, especially the distributive property. And we'll simplify some problems. So the beginning of this worksheet has the same chart, the same table that was on the last worksheet, with the names of the properties of numbers and some examples and how to describe them. And then the distributive property is right here in the middle. That's the one we're going to do a little more work with today. So first of all, the reason that we have these properties of numbers, or the, the reason we want to make sure we know them, is so that we can do problems in our head, so that we can do mental math. Like number one has a really big number, 4,566,234, and I have to multiply it by something. But if you look at what I'm multiplying it by, it's zero. So if I remember the zero property of multiplication, I would remember that all I'm going to do is when you multiply a number by zero, the product is zero. So you don't have to do the work. You don't have to get your calculator out or anything. You can just write down what the answer is using the zero property of multiplication. Let's look at number two. Three plus parentheses seven plus nine. Now this isn't too hard of a problem to do. We can figure out what seven plus nine is, the parentheses part, and then we can add three to it. But even easier is if we use the associative property, which says that I can change the grouping. Look what we have then. I could put the parentheses around the 3 plus 7 and then add 9. Because 3 plus 7 is 10. And 10 plus 9 is easy to add in my head. And let's look at number 4. Number four says four plus x plus six. And some of you might say, oh no, there's an x in it. I'm stuck, I can't do anything. Let's use the commutative property to change the order and put the numbers together so that they're next to each other. So I could rewrite this as four plus six plus x. Now you can go ahead and add the number parts together and then just write the plus x at the end. Now we can't combine 10 plus x, but we don't have to. That's the answer, we leave it like that. Number five, it's one times negative 3 sevenths. So some people might say, oh no, it's a fraction and it's not even a fraction I'm used to working with. But we can use the identity property of multiplication up here that says that if you multiply a number by one, it does not change the number. So we already know what the answer is. We don't have to do any math. We don't have to do common denominators or anything. We can just look at it and find the answer. Now we're going to do some more practice with the distributive property. So if you have 5 times 8, it's 40. We know that that is true. What if we have 5 times 6 plus 2? Now we're going to practice the distributive property, so we're not going to add the 6 plus 2 together using order of operations and get 5 times 8 and get 40. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the distributive property. So the distributive property says that you can multiply the number in front of the parentheses by each number in the parentheses, and then we can simplify and see what we get. So 5 times 6 plus, because there's a plus sign there, 5 times 2. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 2 is 10. If we add those, we get 40. So we can see that these are equivalent expressions. They both will work to find an answer. Now, usually we use the distributive property when there's a variable, when there's an x or an a or a y. But we can do it with numbers too, and that's what we're going to practice doing on this worksheet. We're going to practice writing the distributive property. In the second example, you can just see that you can do the distributive property even if there's three numbers inside the parentheses. You would still follow the same steps. Sometimes using the distributive property is, like in this example here, gives us problems that are easier to do in our head. Sometimes we just do it to practice so that when we get to algebra problems, we'll be able to understand what we're doing. So the first one here has been done. And we're going to do the same steps on all of these. So I don't want you to add first and then multiply. We're going to use the distributive property, which means you're going to take the number on the outside of the parentheses and you're going to multiply it by each term on the inside. So we are going to take 5 times 4 
And then you put a plus sign because there's a plus inside the parentheses, and then 5 times 1. Then we simplify. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 1 is 5. And then we can add them together and get our answer. So the reason we're doing these problems is to practice the distributive property. So make sure you actually show that you're using the distributive property. Let's look at number 11 because there's a minus sign. We're going to take 3 times 5 and then 3 times 2. And we'll put a minus sign in between those because of the minus sign in the parentheses. 3 times 2. And then we would simplify. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6. And then you get your answer. When you're typing, you can use the shift plus the 8 key will give you that star. That means multiplication. So the first part of this would be 6 times 7 plus and then 6 times 8. And then you'd have to finish this one. So you can use the star to mean multiplication. We don't want to use an X for multiplication because you can see in the next section we're going to be using variables and it would, it would maybe mess us up what part we're doing. 12 through 15 is more with the minus sign in the middle, but you will do it just the way we did number just make sure you subtract at the end, don't add. All right, so here's an example of distributive property with variables. In fact, this is more common. This is what you'll usually see for the distributive property. So here we have an original problem of 2 parentheses x plus 5. So we're going to distribute the 2 throughout the parentheses, which means to multiply 2 times x and then 2 times 5. When we multiply, 2 times x is just 2x. You just write 2x. You don't need uh, parentheses. You don't need a time sign. Just 2x plus, and then 2 times 5 is 10. And then you would leave your answer like that. You cannot add these together because the 10 doesn't have an x. Your answer is just 2x plus 10. Let's look at one of these. Let's look at number 19. It says 8 times a plus b. So we're going to take 8 times A, and we're going to take 8 times B. 8 times A plus 8 times B. We can rewrite this as 8A plus 8B, but that's all we can do. We can't add these together because one has an A and one has a B. So that's our answer. You would just leave it like that. 20 will be similar because it's got an X and a Y, so you won't be able to combine anything there. In 17 and 18, your answers are going to look very much like this example problem where you'll have a number times a variable and then it'll be plus or minus a number after that for an answer. So practice with the distributive property. Let me know if you have any questions and have a wonderful day.